let's consider the phenomenon of resonance. So consider the following differential equation, or two q, of x double dot plus 9x is equal to 2 cosine of 3t. And we want to solve this differential equation. And in order to find the general solution to the differential equation, there's two steps. First step is we need to find the homogeneous solution. So the homogeneous solution is the solution without the term on the right-hand side. And using our standard techniques, we can find that is a cosine of 3t plus b sine of 3t. The second part of finding the general solution is to find the particular solution. And as with the method of undetermined coefficients, we would take a guess that the particular solution looks like c cosine of 3t plus d sine of 3t. It has the same form as the term on the right-hand side. Just taking second derivatives. And now we're going to plug this into our differential equation and solve for c and d. So let me just write that out real quick. That's the x double dot term, and then 9x is equal to 2 cosine of 3t. And canceling terms, I find the surprising result that 0 is equal to 2 cosine of 3t. So that's a fail. That didn't work. Something went wrong. So what went wrong? What happened? Well, this sometimes happens with the method of undetermined coefficients. When you want to solve an inhomogeneous differential equation, and you find the homogeneous solution, say in this case looked like this, if it has the same form as the inhomogeneous term, then you've got problems. So again, when you've got these homogeneous solutions, it doesn't have to be cosines and sines, but they have the same form as the inhomogeneous term, then there's a problem. Then this method is going to fail. So, okay, what now? Well, we need to try a different strategy. So instead of the guess for the particular solution of something that looks like cosine of 3t, now we need to use the particular solution, something that looks like ct cosine of 3t plus dt sine of 3t. Again, notice the extra factor of t in front of the cosine and sine. Why am I doing this? Why do I add the extra factor of t? Well, it turns out it works, and so that's going to be good enough for us at the moment. So let's just see how this works. So let's insert this new particular solution guess into our differential equation and solve for the coefficients c and d, as we normally would with the method of undetermined coefficients. Now be careful taking derivatives, because there's a lot of product rules in here, and uh, one just has to be a bit careful. I'm going to write out the derivatives. The first derivative has several terms. And then taking the second derivative, there's some mess, and it all comes down to some terms that look like this. There's four terms at the end of the day for the second derivative. Okay, so now we're going to plug this into the differential equation, the inhomogeneous differential equation, which was x double dot plus 9x is equal to 2 cosine of 3t. And we're going to solve for what c and d values make this true. So again, plugging in for the second derivative, there's the second derivative, plus 9 times x, 9 times x, that's equal to the term on the right-hand side. Again, I can cancel all terms that are the same. And comparing terms on the left and right hand side of the equation, it seems that c must be equal to 0, and 6d is 2, or d is equal to 1 third. So this tells me that the particular solution to this differential equation is just xp is 1 third t sine of 3t. Again, it has that extra factor of t out front. So the general solution is I just add the homogeneous solution that I obtained before to the particular solution. And so now this is my overall general solution. Let's get some intuition for what this particular solution looks like by sketching it. So let's sketch x 
versus t. Again, this x particular is one third t sine of 3t. And so the sine of 3t tells me it's going to look like sine of 3t. But it's going to have an amplitude that grows like one third t. So let me mark some special points on the t-axis, pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, pi, and I can keep going. So the amplitude is going to follow this envelope of 1 third t. So sine hits 0 at all those special points, and so the amplitude will grow as t increases. So the amplitude is increasing with time, and this is the hallmark of resonance, a growing amplitude rather than a decaying amplitude. I want to talk for a minute about why this happens. So why is the amplitude growing with time? Let's go back to considering a mass on a spring. A simple picture of a spring attached to the wall, which is attached to some mass. The mass is described by position x of t. The mass can wiggle back and forth. But let's also add on top of that some external force, which is pushing and pulling on the mass. So not just the spring, but then this extra external force. You can imagine there's some rod attached, and we're going to push and pull. So the mass is going to oscillate back and forth, and it's pulled and pushed by the external force. When I put this together, I have ma is equal to the sum of all the forces, minus kx plus the external force or written as a differential equation, x double dot plus k over mx is equal to 1 over m times the external force. Let's choose some values. 1 kilogram for the mass, 9 newtons per meter for k, and the external force to be this particular combination. So then I get the differential equation that we actually started the video with. We get this differential equation, which now describes some mass oscillating back and forth. Well, I can consider the natural oscillations of this mass on the spring. And then a natural oscillation is when there's no external force. And that's just the homogeneous solution, the solution without the external force. There's this driving force as well. And the driving force, again, has this form 2 cosine of 3t. Now I want to point out what's inside of the sines and cosines. So for the natural oscillation, there's a associated natural frequency which in this case is 3 hertz. The driving force also has a frequency, and its frequency is 3 hertz. So you notice that the natural frequency and the driving frequency are the same. So the driving force is actually in sync with the natural frequency of the mass oscillating back and forth. It's kind of like pushing on a swing. If you push on a swing at the natural frequency, that the swing is already swinging at, then the swing will go higher and higher. And so the swing going higher and higher means an increasing amplitude. I want to point out in this case the amplitude goes like one third t, so it's growing with time, but it's growing linearly with time. It's not exponential with time. Uh, and where is this energy coming from to increase the amplitude? Well, the external force is adding energy to the system and the added energy is showing up as an increased amplitude. So this is a brief introduction to resonance uh, in differential equations.